All right, guys, we'll go ahead and get started. Today is April the 17th. It's a little bit after 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming on today and uh, meeting with us. Uh, today is a pretty special day for us. Um, this is our one year anniversary. Um, we started this, uh, this International Association of Woodcarvers exactly one year ago. And I uh, just wanted to take a few minutes to kind of go through a few things and uh, thank all of you all for coming on each week and meeting with us and uh, for all the presenters that come on and present with us and stuff. Uh, without you all, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. So I wanted to say thank you right off for that. Um, this is our 51st meeting since we started. Uh, we started back in April of last year when the pandemic started. Uh, we were looking for a way to continue to help build the carving community um, and share wood carving during a time when classes, clubs, and shows were being canceled. Uh, so that's been our goal the whole time is to kind of build community, uh, keep people thinking about carving, keep moving towards getting better like we talked about before this meeting started. and. Uh, hopefully uh, teach some, some people uh, some things about carving and uh, you know all of us to learn at the same time. So uh, thank you all for coming out again um, and sharing this with us each week. Um, every video that we do, we share on, out on YouTube. Um, and I checked with Tom before the meeting started. Uh, we've had 140,000 views on the YouTube videos that we posted on YouTube. Uh, through this organization. So the International Association of Woodcarvers has shared 140,000 views, and that's either partial views or full views of videos uh, pertaining to wood carving in the last year. Um, so that just goes to show, you know, how much um, information that we've been sharing through this organization. Uh, I want to thank all of you all who's donated money, donated uh, through the Buy Me a Coffee Fund uh, to help us pay for the Zoom subscription so that we can continue these meetings. And our plans are to continue the meetings, you know, through uh, 2021 at least. Uh, we're going to be working hard to try to get people lined up for the meeting. So again, thank you all for all that you've done. Uh, wanted to thank uh, Chipping Away. You see the the banner back here. They are um, helping uh, with some of the giveaways uh, today. We're going to be doing two gift certificates from Chipping Away, $100 each. We'll do those at the end of the the meeting. Uh, and then we also got a donation from uh, Carol Levy. Uh, she donated a CCA book, the Thinking Inside the Rough Out book that we're going to be giving away as well. Uh, so thank you, Carol, for that. Uh, we'll be gathering uh, email addresses and stuff and contact the person who wins all of those so that we can make sure we get the winnings out to you all. Again, we'll do that at the end of the meeting. Uh, I want to thank Helvey Knives. Uh, they are actually donating a knife that we're going to be doing an auction on next week. We'll have auction in the chat. Uh, we'll post that. Um, up in the chat at the beginning of the meeting and then you all can bid on that and whoever wins the, the proceeds will go towards the uh, the Zoom subscription as well. So I wanna thank them. And again, you'll see their banner over here behind me. Uh, I wanna thank FlexCut Tools. They've uh, donated um, giveaways during this year and also presented with us. So I wanna thank them. Uh, I wanna thank Wood Carving Academy who's come on and uh, supported us through all this. Uh, they actually host a lot of the meetings um, and a lot of the classes that, um, that are going on in the wood carving community. And I'll talk about that at the end of the meeting. Uh, but I wanna thank Yaron and Wood Carving Academy uh, for their support in our meetings as well. I think uh, he comes on quite a bit or watches the videos and uh, he and I chat back and forth after the meeting. So uh, thanks Yaron for that. Um, I also wanna thank Chip Chats and Wood Carving Illustrated. Uh, both of those magazines are doing advertising for us. Uh, to continue to generate interest in these meetings. So I want to thank both of them. Um, again, our goal is always to build the carbon community and you all assist us with that. Anybody that's on here that's uh, that's done a presentation with us in the past, uh, thank you all for coming on. Without you all, we wouldn't be able to do this. Again, we've had uh, presentations every week except for the Saturday after Christmas, we took that Saturday off. We've only had one meeting where we actually discussed sharpening instead of having some, somebody come on and do a presentation. And again, I think some of the people that's on this meeting came on and helped uh, do the talk about the sharpening. So again, it's a community thing. Uh, it's not about Tom and I, uh, we just kind of facilitate this. Uh, so I want to thank you all for that. Uh, I did want to say a couple of thanks. Uh, Larry Green helped us get all this started. I don't know if Larry's on today or not, but in the beginning, Larry came on and he supported us in trying to get the Zoom access that we needed to be able to do these meetings. So I wanted to thank him. 
And again, I want to thank Tom. Tom don't come on and talk a whole lot, but he's behind the scenes, uh, always letting people in and, you know, helping do the drawings and uh, helping set up the meetings. We meet every week and talk about these things, usually a couple of times during the week and we're texting during the week. Uh, so I wanted to thank him. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do for him is I actually lined up a one month subscription to Wood Carving Academy that I'm going to be sending out to him uh, so that we can get him carving a little more. Uh, he's doing a, uh, <clears throat> a home building project right now. I was talking the other day that he hasn't been able to do a whole lot of carving. So Tom, I'm sending that out to you so that you can get back in and uh, start carving some stuff. Uh, and I want to thank Doug Linker. He's on today too. He's done some uh, advi advisory work. Uh, kind of behind the scenes with our YouTube videos and stuff, making sure that we were able to get that out to the public. So thanks, Doug, for that. Um, again, I got a lot of thanks to give out. Um, again, it's a community thing. Thank you all for coming on and uh, participating every week. And uh, we really do appreciate it. Hopefully we'll have a, a, a big year coming up or, you know, going into 2021. Uh, hopefully we'll have a lot of uh, presenters. And again, I'll talk about that at the end of the meeting. So Having said all that, I know you are tired of hearing hearing from me. Uh, you didn't come to see me. Um, we've got Alec Lacoste that's coming on. He's in Kentucky today, so he's actually traveled from Michigan down to Kentucky. He's going to be doing a demonstration with us, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. Again, he's presented a couple times with us, so Alec, I want to say thank you for coming on again today. Thanks for doing the demonstration, and again, we look forward to seeing what you have to share with us. Thanks, Alec. Well, thank you, Blake. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate you guys, everyone, uh, for watching and those uh, who have made this uh, meeting possible. It's really fun. Hey, Alec, your camera is sideways on the video. Oh, is it? Turn it the other way. How about this? Is that better? Yeah, there you go. Cool. All right, so the, the, the deal is today, I'm gonna ask you guys what you want to see me carve. I figured I'm a glutton for punishment, so, and, uh, and lacking uh, a concrete idea for today. So I figured I'd just let you guys throw ideas at me. And uh, I'm indeed in Webster, Kentucky. I'm actually filming um, with my partner, uh, Thomas Polowski. And um, we are, along with Todd German, creating a carving school. So um, more information on that eventually. Uh, but yes, I appreciate the comments. People are already starting to type their uh, requests in there. Um, got wood spirit, dragon, female face. So you guys can go ahead and do that while I'm talking if you want to uh, type them in. Um, Volkswagen bug. All right. <laughs> um, and so anyway, yeah, we're, we're filming for the school gnome house. Oh, cool. These are good suggestions. Odin. Oh, that's cool. Um, and the, the running name for this school is Bridges, but we'll see if we end up keeping it. Um, and it'll be kind of including um, all sorts of uh, great uh, contributing uh, teachers, instructors. We've got uh, Jeff Ferris, we're down here filming today, and um, we're very uh, lucky to have Abby Peterson here who's, who's hosting this and uh, also a fantastic carver. Check out uh, Abby Peterson, Woodlife. Uh, Armadillo, let's see, I, how many of these have I missed? Armadillo. Uh, okay, so we got Volkswagen Bug, Armadillo. I hate to do the easiest thing that was said, but somebody said Wood Spirit. And maybe you're all tired of seeing Wood Spirits, but that would be the easiest thing for me. Volkswagen Bug would probably be on the opposite scale of uh, easy, and probably be the hardest thing. So, so far we're at, you know, Volkswagen Bug, Wood Spirit, and then everything in between from female face to Viking. Okay, I'll I can do the Viking. I'll try that. Okay, so it is written. We're gonna, this is a thin piece of bark. Um, to be completely honest, I'm, I'm, I'm down to the wire with my bark collections. I don't have very many thick pieces, but um, we'll do our best with this. And I'll try and get up close and uh, move the tripod around for that reason. But anyway, so I'm Alec Lacasse. Uh, you guys know that. I don't need to introduce myself. I carve wood and stuff. Um, so I'm going to use uh, this, this knife to start out with, let's say, uh, number four, and it's a clearing tool. And uh, let's see, how can I keep track of time here? It's, it's 2.13. So at about 2.15, I'm going to start the carving, and I'm going to see if I can get this done in the hour, so by 3 o'clock. Uh, so that gives me about 45 minutes, um, if I did my math correctly. But anyway, this is a semi-curved gouge. If I do 
probably, I don't know, 60 or so percent of the work with this tool because um, you can use all different uh, sides of the tool. Um, you can use the very tip to get detail. You can use, um, you, know, you know, basically any part of the tool uh, to create shapes, um, including uh, articulation of the tool to create uh, uh, kind of scoop cuts. And so um, very much like you'd see a chainsaw carver use one bar or someone like Abby, really talented carver, use just one bar to get a lot of shapes. I try to use a, a handful of tools to get a lot of shapes and it helps you use softer woods. You really couldn't um, do a lot of the things that I'm doing uh, by hand in, in red or white oak. So um, anyway, that being said, where, where are we at here? Yeah, we're, we're about less than a minute away. So you guys can count down at home and I'll just imagine that you're counting down. So I'm gonna look for the piece or uh, the, the area of the bark that's widest. So the area of greatest mass for this carving. Again, it's gonna be kind of small. There's gonna be a lot of room up top and below. So because it's kind of narrow all the way through, there's actually an undercut you can't see here. Um, my best bet is probably to set it in here and it's probably, again, it's gonna be small. And uh, I'm gonna call that time. No, it's still not 215 or 315 Eastern Standard. I guess we're right on the border. I guess uh, Abby's shop is divided up so that half of it's Eastern Standard and a half of it's the other, what is it? Central time, yeah. Eastral. Okay, there we go, we're done. Um, normally not carving this fast, but because I don't want to bore you guys, I'm gonna carve fast. I'm actually gonna do it down here. Hopefully you can see, all right? As I start to remove a lot of material, I'll get closer so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so to do a Viking, I'm going to establish the top of the head. I'm gonna have a center part something like center. And we wanna leave room for the beard. And because this is kind of a small piece of bark, I don't wanna get um, too much length on that face. See if I can get a little closer for you. I'm going to start by setting up a kind of mound or roundish oval shape here. And I might even have, well, let's see if I have them looking off this way, I'll have a little bit more. Let's do that. I'm going to, that's kind of a tough decision, actually. But I think we'll just go with having him look off. But then we'll get less of the side of his face. No, we're going to go this way. Decisions, decisions. So I'm not normally going to draw on my pieces when I'm working. Maybe I'll establish a center line. That's a good idea. Um, keep things in proportion, but I recommend if you're kind of new to carving faces that you do, you establish a center line because it will indeed help you to keep things in proportion. And I would say that's the biggest challenge for us carvers is to make sure things look in proportion to one another. I, I struggle with it often and I've often tried to remedy that and I've found that the best way to do that is there are two kind of two main things that come to mind and that's establishing a center line and also um, using a mirror stepping back and looking at your work in the mirror okay so we've got the beard here first thing I do is I'm going to establish the uh the eyes and I'm going to kind of use the four it's gonna be a little harder to use this force because it's such a small piece. So I might dance around the carving with some other tools. This is a uh, number nine. I got a little carried away with that center line. Probably shouldn't have sketched it in thus far, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna 
do a little bit of sketching. So I'm gonna see the top of the head is here, bottom of the head's here. Eye line is gonna be approximately just above center. So the center line is actually gonna bisect the bottom lid meeting the ball of the eye. In between the center line and the chin lines area of the nose. And so, I'm going to start to bring the forehead back to get protrusion of the nose. I'm going to get the uh, nose back to get that nice beard shape as it meets the ala, the side of the nose, got the brow structure here. I'm establishing, so I'm kind of creating a dish shape. Sorry about the lawnmower noise. I'm kind of uh, establishing a dish shape on either side of this uh, center area here, this mound, sort of a triangular shape. The one thing you can do is from your center line, you can, of course, we have the difference between the eye and the chin line. Right down the middle is the bottom of the nose. But one thing you can do draw kind of a triangle um, in that center area. And that kind of tells you where to stay away from material for now as you start to rough in. My tools are still in their toolbox, so I have to pull them out. I don't have my usual magnet strip here, so I'm having to reach over the camera. You have to forgive me. So I want him to have kind of a prominent head, right? He's a, he's a Viking, he's Norwegian. So we're gonna have a nice proud head, forehead. A lot of folks don't talk about the feeling of dismay that all carving, all, all carving people feel, or most of them, I imagine, I can only speak for myself, feel when they're making a, a carving and they're at the rough out stage. Some folks, when they've really planned out a carving and it's methodical and they kind of know where they're at, they don't really feel this sensation that, um, that I'm feeling right now, but it, it, and I feel like it's universal. And it's this kind of dread of the ugly stage. And, you know, if anything, I just want to normalize that feeling uh, <laughs> for people and let them know that uh, every, you know I, I imagine most people feel it and if you don't feel it it's probably because you really you really planned it out and in this case because it's a challenge I have no idea how it's going to go so I'm a little bit a little bit nervous but usually seems to work out So I'm establishing a deep uh, indent in the corners of the eyes here and here. Um, and then I'm going at the outside. So the deepest area of the face I've always taught was in the inside corners of the eyes. Well, it's not true, actually. I was teaching the wrong thing for a very long time. It's actually the, the greatest area of depth is the outside corners, the lateral corners of the eyes. This is the deepest area. warm here. I'm going to take my uh, jacket off. Try and stay out of the way of the camera here. So I'm establishing the parameters of the ala. I'm also defining the separation of the bridge and the forehead. And setting the ball or the mound of the eye back because we don't want that to be too far forward and bulging. So at this point, I'm using a six millimeter number nine, a six, an eight millimeter would probably work. Um, the whole length of this piece is probably about three and a half inches. So it's, it's a pretty small, it's a little smaller than I would normally carve. 
Um, but my goal here is to get the mound of the eye and the protrusion of the nose and the ball of the nose. And I'll show you what that looks like in, in, uh, in a second here. Hopefully this profile helps. It's a little bit high. Let me see if I can lower my tripod. So what I'm looking at is I'm looking at this um, space between the ball and the ala or the nostril flare. And I wanna make sure that there's separation. So one thing I'll do is I'll come in between the ala and the nostril with the number nine and I'll create that, that distance like so. See from the tip of the ball to the, to the corner of the ala, let's see if we can get any closer like so. So creating that nice separation, making sure that nose is standing away from the forehead and bringing the forehead back. This is one of my favorite tools and worth, worth picking up. I'm fairly sure that the folks at Chipping Away have this uh, OCCT or OCC, Lance, is that? OCC. Yeah, it's a great, great knife. It's kind of a skew with a bit of a, you know, you know it's got a shaft, um, so you can kind of grab up on it without cutting yourself. And it gives you a lot of control and it keeps you from bumping parts that you don't want to cut uh, and, and, and making, making problems for yourself. So I'm then defining the bottom of the nose as I come across the side since I've gotten all this depth. So here and here, come back over here. The movement. And I was watching uh, Doug Linker's Wood Spirit video he posted. It was, uh, I think it was like a practice Wood Spirit, he called it. And um, one of the things that he said that I liked was, you know, he kept distance away from the nose and the beard, but not very much, right? So he'd separate the nose from the beard, but he wouldn't go very deep, uh, push the, the material down below the nose very far because you've got all that volume right so you, you you want the beard to be bushy you know he's kind of a mountain man in fact we could have gotten away with a lot more beard here if we wanted to so i'm going to narrow up the temples a bit and that crack looks like it took a good chunk out of the wood but we're just going to pretend like it isn't there it's kind of the way that i tend to go with these sort of carvings and narrow up the nose a bit get any of the flat parts out of the ball of the nose and my camera is right in front of excuse my Uh, I was just looking for another, like a log or something to set a few tools on, that's all. Thank you. Bringing the cheeks back. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Abby Peterson for the win. He is the man. He's been very generous to have us here. Keep us, keep us stay at his house and feed us and all that good stuff. So appreciate that. Okay, so I'm getting the, defining the sides of the forehead coming in. And one thing I learned from uh, Jeff Ferris um, yesterday, one thing he said, which I really liked was he, he likes to, to, to make sure that the material on the outside part of the temples, right? So the bony structure here is nice and thin, right? Because think about a boxer, it's the first thing to get cut, right? It's because this, this bone is pretty sharp and there's not a lot of, uh, you know, um, muscle or fat in between the bone and the and the skin. And so you want to make sure that the distance between the uh, corner of the eye and the temple is not too great. It's not too much mass here. So I'm coming in with the knife and I'm narrowing up the temples.
Okay, so I'm gonna define the mustache. Another thing you can do to kind of position the mouth is divide the space between the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the chin into thirds. And the mouth is in this first third, right? So this divides the upper and lower lip. And so you can use a knife or a V tool or whatever to kind of part and show the lower lip, which is gonna sit down and then this second, third area, right? Right below the first. So I'm gonna kind of define the bottom of that lid like so. Grab my number nine. So what makes this guy a Viking? How is he, how is he gonna be a Viking? Well, we're gonna give him some armor. I'm kind of dancing around a little bit, but we'll take his uh, beard back here at the base and we have just enough material to hint at some armor. And I think what I'll do is I'll block in, excuse my reach, a, actually this is the V tool I wanted, I think. Is it? Yes, it is. Little armor here. Like so, a little separation in the beard and neck. An upside down V or an A, depending on how you want to look at it. And then bring this backdrop back. Well, backdrop meaning this area on either side of this A. This is going to give us the this kind of shoulder pads. We can throw some rivets if we have enough time, but I'm not sure that we will really detail this armor, but I'll separate out the jacket. And, you know, I really would have liked to have had a little satchel coming down. And so I'll just hint at that here. I'll just have part of the satchel coming up across this shoulder and down. Bring that up, tuck that back. Okay, so we've got a little rough in here. Excuse me. Thing I'd like to do is define the ala, the sides of the nose, a little bit more clearly. So I'll use my B tool to come over, trace the outline of the ala. I'll do the same thing on the other side, but you can see how it really separates the uh, the nose from the face. Of course, we want the face to sit halfway in and out of the face. So if I were to draw a line from the top of the forehead to the bottom of the chin, which you can't see because it's covered by hair, but if you could see it, you'd have the nose about halfway in and out. See the back of that V tool? If we get really close, you can you know, see that the nose is sticking out halfway and it's within the face. Um, and, and so we wanna make sure that's the case. I don't want the nose to be sticking too far out. I wanna be careful about that. And this is uh, just hinting at the nasolabial fold. This is the frown line. And I'll come in, I'm gonna define kind of the edge of the beard. It's on both sides. Just wanted to show you that profile. I'll raise this up a little bit. Sorry about the camera shakes. I'm out here with my phone. All of our good camera gear is being occupied. It's used for the school, so. This bug wants to bother me, go away. There it is. So defining, defining the sides of the face as it meets the beard. And you know, honestly, it'd be easier to make this a little bit larger. Right now I'm having to be a little more delicate because of the size, but if you, if you scaled this, you know, one and a half times or even two times um, in a larger piece of bark or butternut or basswood, you could very easily um, rough this in and not worry about being so delicate. Now I'm doing a, a line that almost seems to parallel the, the mid-face groove, uh, the um, nasolabial line. And that is what I just said on accident, the mid-face groove, right? And that, that is a line that comes from the corner of the tear duct and 
kind of crosses over the cheekbone. Um, in some cases, depending on how gaunt we want this guy to look, he might have a more exaggerated version of this. Could have, um, well, let's see, he is a, let's see, he's a warrior, right? So he's kind of battle torn and he might be hungry. I don't know, maybe he's, maybe he's not eaten in a while. He's focused on war or something, whatever Vikings conquering, doing whatever people did in the 1100s or <clears throat> taking over kingdoms temporarily until they were taken back over by the uh, Anglos. but I'm narrowing the temples now using this big number nine. So all such small details, you gotta be careful to, this plug is really bothering me. He, is, he just loves me. You be really careful to um, take a step back and make sure that everything is in relative proportion. Um, one issue that we're gonna run into is there's just not a lot of material here because of the corner of the wood. So we're gonna have to kind of set some of this beard back in order to compensate for it. Bring this area down here, back with my big number four. for time, 35. These challenges are fun, these time things. Um, I would say it's a really good practice to set a timer and to use as a, a tool to keep you accountable. Look at you know, Par Parkinson's law, it's this idea that in a given project that the time you allocate will shrink or expand, um, or, or rather that the time get needed to complete a project will shrink or expand based on the time allocated, right? So in other words, if I, if I give myself 45 minutes to finish a carving, I can get pretty close. Um, but if I gave myself two days, would the carving be better? Yes, but maybe marginally better, maybe not that much better. And, and so it is good to, to kind of take, take some time out, block out a short period of time to see how much you can do, right? You don't want to be unrealistic with your time constraints. You should give yourself, a, you know, a minimum of, you know, uh, you know, maybe maybe thirty minutes to an hour to rough in a smaller piece. But doing so will help you to um, just sort of see what's possible, and and it'll also kind of teach you to be efficient with cuts. To use the bare minimum cuts and, and the cuts that you do make to be very precise and so often carvers we have a tendency to whittle at things for weeks if you're anything like me that is that's that's probably what you do and and that's fine and dandy and it probably makes for good carvings but every once in a while challenging yourself is good most people think that i do all my carvings this quickly because i do these live streams and that's kind of the main way that i present my stuff but i would say the average carving i do takes we you know ah, probably five, six days. Hard to say exactly how many hours because of the kind of the, the way that I work. I work on projects and then I put them aside. I usually have maybe seven or eight, maybe 10 projects going at once. If you're anything like me, it, you'll, you'll, you'll kind of struggle to set, set up a time frame to uh, complete a carving. So this, this challenge is really helpful. All right, so I'm going to find the bottom lip. I'm not doing a, a fur cap the way that, um, well, because it's not a mountain man, frankly. I, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, hey, maybe you know more about Vikings than I do. Maybe they had fur caps. I like to think about the forehead as kind of having three panels. Um, 
at five if you include the temples, but there's kind of the, the front angle, which is one, and there are these two kind of side angles, and then of course the temple, so five if you include those, but um, people often just kind of think of the forehead as kind of being this round shape. Um, it really isn't. It's really not all that um, round. Well, it can be. You know, some people have rounder foreheads than others, but if you start to look at your, your husband's or wife's forehead, you'll notice that there is some dimension in most cases, and there, there are planes. We're going to take the sides of the face down a bit here, here and here. I don't really want his cheekbones to be too pronounced. So I want to take his forehead back a bit more. I guess if it's all right, if anyone, you know, if I'm allowed to open up for questions, if anyone has any questions or comments or whatever, you can go ahead and throw those out there. Like Alec, why did you flatten that side so much when you were cleaning up? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. I wish I wouldn't have. Okay. I'm raise up the inside corners of the eyes a bit more. I want to have a bit more of a mean look. He's a Viking. I don't want him to look too happy. So we're gonna. Put some corners on the inside as his nose meets the here and here. Move this over. Did you have some sort of uh, art training before you started carving? Um, no, I didn't, but I. I didn't know. I went to the, into the office of the our our city's art college. You know, uh, I won't say the name of it, but one of the big ones. And the, I, I, I have nothing disparaging to say, so I don't know why I wouldn't say the name of it. It was CCS, and they. Uh, I brought in a couple of, you know, kind of half half butt wood spirits, and like uh, and like a couple of Vikings and a Native American or something, and maybe it wasn't a Viking, something along those lines. And they looked at him and they said, well, we'll give you our full scholarship. And I was, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And they gave me a pamphlet and we left and I read through the pamphlet and I figured, well, that, that must mean it'll be free. And lo and behold, I think that it was still like 40 grand a semester. So with their, you know, full scholarship. So I decided, well, probably best not to do that. I don't want to go into hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt just to get an art degree. And they didn't really have a program that I was that I was excited about. No wood carving, right? <laughs> Sculpture probably would have been great as well. But I, I just decided against it. And instead, I went to school and I studied. Um, well, I was originally studying uh, for pre-med as a, as a young, young guy. And so I took a bunch of biology and science courses and and I always had a love for biology and anatomy. And I like to draw, um, but but I ended up kind of going. You know, this is, I don't think this is what I want to do. I, I remember I had a, geo, a geology teacher who um, said at the beginning of this class, you know, basically the merits of having a degree and how the average person with a degree makes something like you know forty percent more income, or maybe it was seventy percent more income. I don't remember what the figures were. I'm making those up, um, but. Afterwards, I said, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting number. Um, I'm kind of struggling right now with whether I want to be in school. This is what I do for a living. And, I, and uh, I, I make sculptures and I showed him my website. He said, you know, Alec, you shouldn't stop doing this. You know, you, you should continue this. You know, you, you might continue pursuing education, but he said, I wouldn't at the expense of this. And at the time I was fully enrolled um, and went on to take, you know, 17 credit hours and commute back and forth, still trying to do art shows and do commission work to pay 
pay so I could save up and buy a house. And I, I then decided, pivoted to business school. I thought, well, I'll go to business school because the thing that most artists lack is a, a basic knowledge of business and accounting. So I did that and about halfway through business school, I was working with Todd to create um, the, the school that I have now, which is Fundamentals of Wood Carving. And I, I started to realize that the school that I was at, especially since COVID hit, this was not that long ago, was um, not doing a fantastic job of managing their online students. Really poor, poor job. And, and the, the program just was, was really difficult uh, to, to keep up with because it was just boring as all get out. I mean, the instructors didn't really manage the classrooms very well. They were filming one you know, update video a week with their iPhones and it seemed like half of them were in darkly lit rooms. I mean, no care or love at all put into their work. And most of them I found out later were adjunct professors. So they were, you know, busy. They were busy as I was. They were trying to manage, you know, multiple careers in many cases or families or what have you. So um, I decided, well, you know, I, I could enroll in another business college or I could just apply the knowledge that I have now to the business that I already have. And um, I figured, well, and if my business doesn't work, my backup plan is carbon. So um, that's what I've been doing ever since. It's, that's been about, I think it's about a year and a half now or two years um, that I've been back to carving. But I'm so, I'm really glad um, that I, I went back and I learned some, some things about business and got inspired and excited and um, not by any, uh, not by anything I learned in business school. It was, you know, lear learning on my own, uh, feeling like I was getting ripped off at business school. If I'm being totally transparent, so. That's the long version of it. So no, no art training, just trial and error. And I have, you know, yet, yet it's always so much to learn. So I'm learning a lot here with Ferris and it's kind of the selfish reason I started the carving school is so I could hang out with carvers who were better than me and learn from them. And it's proving to work out pretty well so far. Hey, Alec, there's a um, question in the chat about resources that you can point to for proportions of the face. Yeah, well, there, there, you know, that's a really good question. There, I'm trying to remember the name. I think it was Marv Kaiser set. He wrote a book on proportions that really broke it out. I think it's called Human Proportions. You could just look up his name, but he's an excellent one to look at for, um, for that kind of stuff. I mean, he is... Uh, he kind of breaks it down in the simplest way. And that, that's kind of the way I liked, liked it. Um, I hesitate to focus too much on uh, those sort of things because um, it would it, probably be better to spend that time learning about the anatomy. I mean, uh, you know, the great teachers like Dave Stetson could tell you, um, you, know, learning, you know, learning the anatomy uh, is, is very important. Um, and most really good teachers uh, like Dave, they understand the anatomy well inside and out and they have a love for that and so if you can if spend that time that you're trying to learn about you know rules of proportion and learn the substructures and what's going on um you know it, this this the proportions will come a little bit more naturally because you kind of understand their position and what and what they're doing and um but yeah i would say you know any of those uh you know drawing portrait books are great too i i probably read more of those books than i have carving books in my life uh and and so they give you a great idea for what to do with proportions as well. Hopefully that answers the question. Give him a bit more of an aggressive look. Shape the tip of his nose. That nasal labial fold as it meets this tissue and, and the ala find that, that mid-face groove here get that a little bit more depth and i don't know where we're at for time but i think we've got less than 15 minutes so i'm going to start to kind of button up some of these shapes so i can really get into detailing because we don't have a lot of time right now he looks like he's sleeping
also it's a bit of an inside thing apparently but uh, ferris in our in our school project i don't know if they will ever see it so i feel like they'll have to I'll have to tell him now but ferris um used his own ears as an analogy for the difference in proportion uh, of one one side of the face to the other of it. and and he and he gave you a shout out dave so i wanted to make sure that you heard it Tell Jeff I didn't say hi. Okay. I'll tell him that you flatly refused and I tried to make you say hi to him, but you didn't. Okay, so I'm getting some, some shape here. He's starting to come through a little bit. He is teeny tiny. I have not made a carving this small in a long time. I'm gonna outline the beard here. I don't want it to be too perfect. Actually, from watching Jeff, I've learned, don't make the beards too perfect. And especially Mountain Man, he does not have maintained trimmed hair. He is he's a man of the woods. He hasn't gotten lined up at the barber in months. Maybe, maybe weeks, but definitely not months. Go well, on, is, the skew, is that the day? Is mm -hmm. that the Rick Jensen half inch skew knife? Wow, I don't, to be completely honest, I don't know. I don't know who, who this was for or where it comes from, but it is really- You said that's uh, available on chipping away? I believe they have it. Yeah, I believe they have The Jensen one is a little bit rounder. That's a little bit pointier than the Rick Jensen's. Got it, okay. Doug to the rescue, <laughs> knows what's up. And why would you use that skew knife instead of a knife? Gosh, you know what? To be completely honest, I found this in a pile of tools that I bought at an estate sale. And I was like, it looks so cool. I've got to use this thing. There's got to be a use for it. And I started fiddling with it. And I just noticed from, from use that it was giving me the ability to kind of cross over and make shapes that I wasn't able to do with the knife. And I, again, I think primarily it has to do with the fact that the shaft is dull. And so I can get over on, uh, you know, one side of the, of, the, of the nose, for instance, over into the eye area, and I'm not worried about cutting the bridge of the nose. So that, that's one way that, you know, that I think it, it's better than the other knives, but the handle's not in your way. That's a great, uh, Abby's over here. You just made a really good point. That's a really, that's a good observation. Yeah, because, you know, if I was holding a knife, you know, my hand would be um, in line uh, with, with the cutting edge, but because it's skewed and it's, um, you know, it, it's facing forward, it keeps my hand out of the way of the cutting edge. Yeah. So I think, Is there thank a you, Ed. L on the handle? I'm so sorry? Is there a letter L on the handle? There isn't. I thought I saw something. Okay. Says Ralph Benny. Long used to make some of those in North Carolina. I'm sorry, who did? Ralph Long. Oh, cool. Okay, let's see what do I got. Oh gosh, I have eight minutes. I have to carve these eyes. I have to carve these eyes. Okay. The eyes have it, as go Ron Adamson would say, and still says. Um, I'm going to use the V tool right in this corner because it is such a small carving. Um, I could use a veiner, a tiny little veiner, and get in there and ruffle, you know, this little guy, for instance. This is, I don't know, maybe a one or two millimeter veiner. It's teeny tiny to come in and define the, the inside corners here. But I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna define the upper eyelid first. And I'm not going very deeply in here, not very deeply at all. I'm just kind of coming across with a sort of a, an arc like so and setting the eyes in, the, the top of the eyes, right? And I've already kind of gone down below the eyes earlier, kind of defining the lower lid and then the mallard bag, which is kind of the lowest most bag that kind of runs parallel for a few seconds in here in between the nose and the flesh with, with, with the mid face groove. But then it kind of comes over around into the inside corner of the eye. 
And I want to make sure, of course, that the ball is up and in the head. So down here, it's going to be lower or more recessed than up here. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to kind of remove material from below the eye. And I'm using this little skewed knife and dull edge up, sharp edge down. And I'm pairing the eyes and bringing them down, inside corners coming down. Right, so what I'm doing is I'm getting this nice mound that sits up and in this cavity of the eye, like so. And that's giving me a pretty decent setup for the eyes. Now, you know, I could very easily widen or narrow up this face and it'd probably be more proportional, but um, we're kind of limited on time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the best that I can with the whip, maybe narrow it up just a little bit at the temples. Um, and the nose is very pronounced, but um, I kind of like I kind of like that. It's a little bit of a stretch, but I like it. He's French Canadian, right? So we, we French Canadians, we've got we've got those nice long noses, right? Look at that thing. I'm sorry. I hope you didn't have your kids nearby when I did that. I apologize. Don't want to scare them away. So I'm bringing the forehead down with the with the, the skew. I use this thing a ton. I don't think I've put it down. I'm gonna bring the forehead back a bit more. What a lovely noise. Is he uh, Jake breaking? Okay, we've got five minutes, guys. So thanks for your patience with all the, the noises. There are a lot of implements out here. People are getting stuff done out here. They're getting stuff done. Coming in the inside corner of the beard where it meets the cheek. Getting some nice depth in there. Am I going to have time to detail the hairs? Probably not, because I'm fiddling with all this other stuff, but I'll do the best I can. A little groove in the upper lip. Sorry? Take all the time you need, Alec. If you have extra time, you can go ahead and do what you need to. All right. I don't know how many of you are in uh, Canada, in Ontario particularly right now, but Tom was bringing uh, Blake and I up to date about everything going on there with the lockdowns. And, you know, and, you know we in the U.S., and particularly us in Michigan, we were in lockdown for, for quite a while. And so I feel for you guys right now and hope that you guys can get numbers down and you can get back to doing normal things because that is just not fun. It's just not, not cool. But I'm um, grateful that you, you know, we can carve the indoors. And as uh, Blake was saying earlier, it's a good thing. We can keep each other company this way and stay indoors and get some carving done. <laughs> I love this thing. I've been using it half the time, Jeff. Have you? Oh, I don't know. It's nice on the bark. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we've got three freaking minutes. Son of a biscuit. Three minutes? I've got to carve these eyes. Okay, good. Okay. Jeff, believe me, guys. Thank you. When Jeff uh, Ferris first commented on my videos on uh, or a post, he put, commented on a post that I did on Facebook. I thought I thought I, I was, you know, my, my, I basically I felt like my life was, I, it, I could die happy. I was so excited. For real, I was, I ran up to my mom and dad and I showed them the comment and they both knew who you were because they, they knew they're in this world too now because of me. 
and uh, they were really proud. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm defi I'm coming up and I'm defining the upper lid to that first line that I carved, establishing the upper lid. And then I'm going to use the knife and bring that down the way that I did before to that line. Oh gosh, is this going to freaking so small? So small. I'm trying to make, I'm trying to stretch this knife a little too far, maybe. Okay, so I'm bringing the the ball now. So really, underneath this upper lid is the lower lid and the ball of the eye, and I'm bringing this all down. And maybe I'll come in and I'll I'll score the upper eyelid with this knife, and maybe, and separate it from the from the brow ridge a little bit more because it kind of sits up in the brow ridge up and below it. And so, you know, creating a little shadow that way isn't gonna hurt anything. Okay, clearing that out. And the same thing up here. And what, is it probably time? Yeah, it's four o'clock, so yeah, I failed. But Blake said that I could keep going, so I'm gonna at least finish the eyes. But let it be known that uh, an international association uh, first anniversary, I failed. I failed the task. Y'all can y'all can tune out and go home now, and I'm gonna I'm gonna cry myself to sleep tonight. Okay, let's see here. Upper eyelid. I'm gonna really go in there and define that a little bit more clearly. For those of you remnant folks who are still watching me do this, I'm sorry to let you down. Wow, those lids help. Thank you, Abby. Man, I'm not sure what to do with this live stream. I haven't heard Stetson pipe up with anything in, in all of this. Live. I don't feel like it's really live. Where's Stetson at? Come on now. probably bored he's probably tuned out Dave's okay not well, in, man. he's not in <laughs> okay lower lower lid here we go I, I usually like to start a little bit low uh, i'm sorry a, a little bit narrow with the opening of the eye because you can always open it up later Oh goodness gracious. So you would usually you usually use a V tool for this, but I'm coming in with the knife because I've already got it in my hands. And so I'm creating a stop cut and I'm coming down between this upper lid and lower lid, very gently coming in and separating out the lower and upper with this ball. Mostly emphasizing this lower cut because I want the ball to be up and in the skull. So if I make sure and I reduce the lower a bit more than the upper, I'm gonna have the appearance of the ball sitting up and in the head. Okay. Does that make sense? We're getting there. So I can get, get ahead of you so you can see what's going on. I'm going to try not to get in the way of the camera here, but we're about where we need to be as far as getting most of the major shapes in. You know, I could go in with a small veiner and I could start to kind of create some depth in the inside corners again. And then, of course, where the tear duct lives, I can kind of go around that a little bit. There's usually a bit of space in between the corners of the nose and the two eyes. And if you can hear, that's Jeff. He's teaching for the school. So hopefully we're not too loud. I can't. Okay. So one of you is happy because one of you asked for the Viking and I just went with it.
I'm going to texture up the beard a little bit with this. This is that six millimeter. Actually, it might be an eight, number nine in that range. I always get my sixes and eights confused. I'm going to separate these tucks out and I'm going to try not to be too symmetrical with the space of these cuts because I don't want it to look too perfect. Again, he's a mountain man. He's not a, he's not a beard model. Okay. He's not a hipster. String beard coming in. Well, if you guys are very patient for watching all this, I appreciate your time and honored to have been a part of the one year anniversary of this fine group meeting. Appreciate it. Hey, Alec, how's your uh, guitar gig going? My guitar gigs are not really going. I, I played a wedding, well, maybe two weddings last year. Um, you know, kind of everything is shut down um, for now. Um, so, which is a little bit of a bummer for me because I kind of play guitar because I, a, a performance. I don't really sit and play guitar all that much by myself anymore, being that I'm busy with the school and with carving in general. Um, but uh yeah i miss it i guess jeff plays guitar i i brought my guitar with me so we could jam out but i don't think uh we'll see if we can get to it he's a busy carver he's a busy he's a busy bee helping us with this school so his carving is awesome he's doing a mountain man right now with the full brim bearded cap feathers coming out the back end um that's gonna that's gonna be a fantastic lesson no doubt hey alex somebody wants to know where they can buy your work from uh can you share where people can get your information um if they want to buy my work they can go um on my website and shoot me a message or they can go on my my facebook just go you know if you want to go on facebook you can just search my name it's a-l-e-c alec l-a-c-a-s-s-e and that's a good place um, on Facebook. If you search me, there's a picture of, of, of my face staring straight ahead and you can message me there about a carving. But um, if you're interested in uh, this particular carving, you can message me on Facebook or, or wherever. Um, I don't know if they'll post a link on YouTube to anything, but when, you, when this is posted later or, or whatnot, but we'll, um, you can go to the website, which is just aleclacasse.com. It's A-L-E-C-L-A-C-A-S-S-E.com. And shoot me a message there. Um, underneath the eyes, bags under the eyes. Alec, is there some uh, rule of thumb for measuring the width of the lip? Ah, that's good. Yeah, that's a good question. I, well, yeah, there is, but I don't really love it because it's so often wrong. Um, but there is a rule. And the, the one that I've heard, and I'm sure Dave or Doug or others of you who are teachers can tell me what um, a better rule is. But the one I've heard is if you look at the center of the eye and you draw a line down from the center to the corner of the mouth, that would give you the distinct or, or defined area for the corner of the mouth. That's that's so that's one center, to center then yep so center to the yeah. corner of the mouth and that's you know it's a fine enough rule but the best thing to do is get, get the calipers out find a reference photo and shrink it to the size of the wood carving that you're working on and just take direct measurements from there and then you can kind of see for yourself how these rules hold true to whatever it is that you're trying to carve mm -hmm. or even yeah. if, even better yet is use your use your own face um, as a reference, I, it took me about, I don't know, 13 years. And actually Stetson had the idea of me using myself as a reference, but I can't bear to stare at myself in the mirror for that long, um, in public. Uh, cause when I do it at home, it's great. You know, I can cry myself, you know, to, 
you know, it, through a, through a work of art, you know, but I don't want to get all emotional here. So, um, but yeah, the point well, is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, when I look in the mirror, the mirror cracks. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've gone through a couple of mirrors that way. I'm so, I understand. Okay. I'm serious. There's no greater gift to carvers that like carving faces than, than, than themselves. If you just use your own face as a reference, um, it is. Oh, I don't know why I hesitated to do it for you know so many years. I mean, it is so helpful. Okay. I'm going to get, I'm going to get calling this one done. This is a, uh, I don't want to test everyone's patience too much here. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and texture up the beard a little bit with this number nine. I don't want it to be so perfectly round. And I'll add some areas of depth with a, uh... and you see this tendency, these spacing, the spacing of these three cuts, they're pretty even. We don't really want, we don't want them to be too perfectly even. So I have to break that up and I, and I started to break it up with another cut. But that is the tendency we have is to make patterns. And when it comes to facial hair, there's, you know, we've got to break that habit. And, you know I mean? Unless you're, unless you've got a beard model. Your hands didn't really get to detailing the armor all that much, but we really got a nice little result and uh, happy with that. Pretty happy with it. Next, I'll take the little 250 sandpaper, 220 sandpaper, sorry. I'll just touch it up. Ah. I noticed something. I want to push his forehead back. Okay, I'm going to come in with the 220. And I've said this a billion times, and I continue to say it even though it's probably over said now, but sandpaper is a tool of sculpture and I don't want to remove any of the details that I've created. I just want to add details. So I'm, often if I got a reference photo, I'm going to use the reference photo as a guide for where to apply more pressure and sanding and what parts to leave and what parts to create more detail. I had a commission a few years ago for a family member and, uh, and it was of their dad. And uh, they, I sent them a picture and they loved the, the result. They were super super sweet and said oh my gosh we can't believe that it looks so good it looks just like that and then i brought it to them we met up for for lunch um and i had it mounted to a plaque and i was excited to give it to them because i had you know done this this the finish process you know and i had sanded it and all that and i unveiled it and they looked at it and both of them their mouths were open they said what happened <laughs> i was like what do you mean what happened i said all the detail all that all those lines and cut marks and wrinkles and all that stuff is gone and so i took it home and i i carved it back up and got all those lines and wrinkles and details and shapes in the carving and it taught me a lesson to to try and use the sandpaper i, I kind of like to form it into the little like a conical shape and then i'll apply pressure in the mid face groove for instance to try and accentuate the already existing shape and instead of subtract from it. Okay. Actually gonna give you a three quarter perspective over here so you can kind of see where we're at. I will add pupils, I think. I know I keep saying that I'm gonna finish up, but he needs 
in my eyeballs, I think. So I'm going to come in with the little veiner that I had hours ago. All right. And uh, I kind of picture this guy looking out into the distance. It's kind of straight ahead. So I'm using the little tiny veiner to create these dish shapes. The details that I sanded out, I can reestablish with the small veiner and the V tool. Okay. I'm pretty satisfied with that. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate the time. Um, I'll turn it over back to Blake and Tom. They can take it from here. If you guys have any other questions, um, you can feel free to pose those now before I hand it over to them and they start the process of the giveaway and all that good stuff we're here for. All right, Alec, I will uh, go ahead and take it back over. I want to say that uh, that's an amazing carving that you've done there in a short amount of time. So thank you again for coming on with us today. Um, we will be sure to post all of Alex's information out uh, on the YouTube post when we do that later on today. So if you need his information, um, information about his podcast, his uh, Instagram page, his website, uh, we'll have all that linked in the, uh, the video there when we post it. So make sure you go out and check that out. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, talk to you a little bit of, again about the giveaways and we'll get that started. Uh, Tom's going to be doing the drawing behind the scenes and I'll kind of talk through it. Uh, the first thing we're going to give away is the uh, Thinking Inside the Rough Out book, uh, the Caricature Carvers of America book that was donated by Carol Levy. Uh, we'll do it first. Again, we had uh, 282 entries. Uh, we set up the, um, the uh, post, I guess it was, to be able to gather the information uh, so that we can do the drawing electronically instead of Tom having to write everything down. So uh, we're, we've taken those names, we put them in a spreadsheet. Tom's going to generate uh, the number now, and then he'll flip over to the spreadsheet, and we'll go to the name that corresponds with that number. Um, we already have the email addresses, so Tom will get that information and contact the winners by email. Um, so we'll go ahead and do the first one. And that number is 274. And it looks as though the winner there is Jeff Flynn. So the winner of the CCA book is Jeff Flynn. Jeff, uh, we have your email address. We'll contact you by email and uh, see what we need to do to arrange getting that sent out to you. Again, uh, Carol Levy is the one who donated that and uh, we'll be shipping that out to you. Uh, now we'll go on to the two gift certificates from Chipping Away. Both are $100 each. Uh, we're going to do two different drawings. Again, thanks uh, to Chipping Away for donating these gift certificates. Uh, they're electronic certificates, so we'll send those to you by email, uh, and then you'll be able to use those on their website for any kind of purchase. So uh, the first 100 uh, gift certificate will be drawn now. And we'll do the same format. We'll get the number and bounce over to the spreadsheet and see who wins that. So that number is 71. And number 71 looks like Randy Lanning or Lenning. Uh, so Randy, will you have your email address? We'll contact you uh, by email with that information. And uh, congratulations on that $100 gift, $100 gift certificate from Chipping Away. Uh, now we'll do the second drawing.
And that number is 211. And the second winner is Christine Hill. So congratulations, Christine, same thing. We'll contact you by email and uh, make sure that we get all that information lined up to get out to you. Uh, thank you all for, um, for signing up for these giveaways. Uh, next week, we're going to do uh, a giveaway for a one month subscription to Wood Carving Academy. Uh, that was donated by, um, by Wood Carving Academy. Uh, so some lucky winner will be able to go out and take advantage of a, a month subscription uh, where you can go out and learn some from some of the great uh, instructors who have put uh, classes out there. Um, again, that'll be Wood Carving Academy, a one month subscription. Uh, next week, we're also going to do the knife auction. And I'll go ahead and show you that. This is a uh, knife that was donated by Helvey Knives. Uh, Rich called this freestyle. So the handle is not like any other handle that he's done. Uh, it's a two inch rough out blade uh, made by uh, Rich and Holly Smithson. And they've uh, graciously donated this and the proceeds will go towards uh, our Zoom subscription. Um, so look forward to seeing how the bids go on that. Again, we'll start the bids in the chat uh, during the meeting next week and we'll leave it up until the end of the meeting. Uh, next week we'll have on Bruce and Kenny. Uh, he's a caricature carver. He's gonna be coming on doing a demonstration uh, after that, we have Jeff May coming on on May the 1st, who is a chainsaw carver. Uh, we met with Jeff last week, and he's going to do, um, do kind of a different meeting. Uh, we've never had a chainsaw carver come on and do a demonstration, so that should be interesting. Uh, Charles Banks is going to come on on May the 8th. Uh, he's a flat plane carver, and he'll be coming on uh, talking about flat plane carving and possibly do a demo as well. And then Tom Matus is going to come on on May the 15th, and he's a duck decoy carver. Uh, and he'll be coming on with us talking about duck decoy carving. Uh, that again is something that we haven't had on yet. So uh, pretty good lineup uh, coming up through uh, the middle of May. Uh, Tom and I will be working hard to try to get other people lined up uh, so that we continue these meetings through, uh, through this year. I wanted to tell you about some opportunities out on Wood Carving Academy that's available. Uh, Mr. Dave Stetson that's on the meeting today has a seated man class uh, that will be starting at the end of this month. So if you're interested in that class, uh, you'll have to buy a rough out. Uh, I think Dwayne Gosnell has the rough outs available, so you need to get signed up for it. Uh, contact Dave about the class, and he can give you all the information. Um, Janet Cordell, Dwayne Gosnell, and Del Green, all three have classes uh, that are going on now, so those you cannot enter. Uh, starting in May, uh, Kevin Applegate has a class on a pirate that's available. Uh, Bob Hershey, who's on the meeting today, has a Fearless Freddy. Uh, surfing frog caricature class that uh, is available and Janet Cordell will be doing another class on a sky doll. Uh, again, that's all in May. And then in June, Ryan Olson and Del Green both have uh, caricature carving classes available. Ryan's is carving miniatures. Del Green's is carving Roper, which is a cowboy caricature that he's developed. Uh, so go out and check out those on woodcarvingacademy.com. You can get all the information now uh, or you can contact the carvers for those. Uh, another opportunity, Dwayne Gosnell is doing a Whittling Wednesday, which is a little cheaper class. Uh, they're doing every other Wednesday, so you might want to go out on his website and check those classes out if you're interested. And again, Chris Hammock uh, is doing ongoing classes. I think a lot of his classes are full, but I think you can contact him and he may have some, uh, some spots available for some stuff he has coming up. So a lot of opportunity to, uh, to take advantage of these Zoom classes that are available. Again, I've taken a lot of them and uh, you know, it's good instruction. You get all the instruction for the time of the class. Uh, you're not just spending 15 minutes with an instructor. You get six, eight, 12 hours of time with that instructor to be able to ask all kinds of questions. So uh, if you're interested in classes, make sure you take advantage of those. Again, I want to thank all of you all for joining us. Uh, thank you all for making it a great first year with the International Association of Wood Carvers. Thanks for all the presenters, all the people that make this possible. And uh, we look forward to uh, future meetings coming up. Coming up. Again, Bruce and Kenny will be uh, on with us next week and we'll be doing the, uh, the giveaway for Wood Carving Academy and also doing the knife auction. So until next weekend, thank you all for joining us and we'll see you all next Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you all.